I'm Michelle Anderson of Clarinet Mentors. Welcome to another complimentary mini lesson on making the clarinet more easy to play for you. Today I'm going to talk about reeds and some tips and tools you can use to adjust your reeds to make them play better. We all know as clarinetists that the reeds definitely affect how we play and some reeds work better than others. I know when I work with my students and I've been teaching for over 30 years now that sometimes we can just make a small adjustment to their read and it makes the response so much easier for them. And for myself, this is key, I'm always um, playing with my reads to make sure I get them in a way that works really well. So this is Reads 101 today. We're just going to introduce some basic things you can do to make your reads play a lot better. And they have to do with how you set the read up on the mouthpiece. I'll have some more advanced read technique in other videos, but this is a really great way to get started. Let's start by talking about where you place your reed on the mouthpiece and how that affects the response. Most of you, when you first learn clarinet, were probably given a reliable system for how you set the reed on the mouthpiece. And that's, that's helpful, it's necessary when you're first starting out. So for most people, um, it looks something like have your reed centered on the mouthpiece so that you can just see a little line of black over the tip of the reed. So here's my homemade mouthpiece here. Here's my homemade reed. If I were to follow those directions, I would put this reed nice and centered um, so that it's covering the hole but not quite as high as the actual tip of the mouthpiece. Now that does work and there's nothing wrong with that. However, it may not be the best place for your reed. So here's a really simple guideline for you to follow with how we place our reed. When you have the reed placed so that it's just barely covering the hole, the very thinnest part of your reed is hitting the top rail of the mouthpiece. This makes that reed act as soft as that reed can possibly act. If the reed is a stiff reed, that's great. You want it to be in the softest possible position. But one thing about reeds is they do get softer over time in two different ways. One is simply as you're playing on a reed, it'll start to feel a little softer after about 20 minutes of playing. So if you're using one reed for 45 minutes to an hour, you might find that after 20 minutes it's softer than when you started. And that reed, in fact, would sound better if it, was, if it acted a little bit stiffer. When we move our reed up on the mouthpiece, let's say even with the tip, now a little bit thicker part of the reed is touching the rail. And that makes this reed act stiffer. And in fact, we even have the freedom to move our reed slightly above the tip of the mouthpiece, and that will give it its maximum strength. So I said reeds get softer in two ways. One is sort of through the course of a single rehearsal, they'll act a bit softer after we've been playing on them for a while. And secondly, I think every, t every day that we play on a reed, it does get a little bit softer. So one of the reasons we end up retiring old reeds is that just through the time that we've been playing on them, they've gotten softer and softer. So Sometimes a brand new reed tends to be stiff. I'll place it lower on the mouthpiece. And uh, an older reed, which tends to be soft, I'll place higher. Now, two things about this. It's really important that when the reed vibrates, open and shut against the mouthpiece, it completely seals this hole. So if we go too low or we're crooked, you wanna watch that you don't have, say, a leak in the corner. Uh, if the reed is not sealing completely, it'll feel very resistant and it'll feel like the air is blowing back at you. So it's pretty easy to, to know if that's happening. Likewise, there's a limit to how high we can move the reed. A little bit over the tip of the mouthpiece seems to give you more strength and work well, but too much and suddenly it's really hard to play. So usually just through trial and error, you can figure that out. So I kinda wanna demonstrate what that might look like. I've just put a reed on my clarinet here that's um, an old deer reed. It sounded fantastic in a concert about a month ago and as it started to wear out, it's kind of been pushed aside to the edge of my reed case because it's gotten a little bit too soft. So you might be wondering, well, how do we know if a reed is too soft? Well, the symptoms of a soft reed, first of all, if you just play an open G, it responds very, very easily. And sometimes we kind of like that feeling. But the downside to a soft reed, it doesn't quite give you enough resistance to really support your tone, especially in the high register. So a good way to check to see if a reed is too soft is to play some of your higher notes, even simply playing a C scale from your C just over the break, going all the way up to your high C, your thumb and register key C. That note's quite a sensitive note. Um, if your reed is really soft, you might even find your very high notes don't respond at all, and you've probably experienced this at some point. Um, it would sound something like this. So I'm trying 
trying to play high C and I'm getting that annoying little undertone. If you get that, it means the note doesn't have enough support. Now support comes of course from embouchure and air and our reed. So I could have improved my air support and that note probably would have worked just fine. But if that's happening to you on a regular basis, it may be a sign that your reed is too soft. If it's really happening a lot, you may actually need a reed that's a strength higher than what you're currently playing. If you're on a three, go to a three and a half, or at least it's worth trying out. Now, the other symptoms of a reed that's a bit soft is the high notes will sound a bit wild sounding, a bit loud, not quite as warm and focused as we like, and they may seem a little bit flat. So I'm just gonna play a quick scale. This reed is a bit softer than I like, and what I'll do is play the scale, and then I'm gonna move this reed higher up to give me more strength and I'll play it again so you can hear the difference. To me that's a little bright and a little thin sounding. So I had it just below the tip of the mouthpiece. Now I'm just, as you can see, I just loosened my top ligature screw and I'm just wiggling it up. And I kind of gotten to know where on my mouthpiece it works, but you can see uh, it's actually about half a millimeter over the tip of the mouthpiece. And I'll try that scale again. Now what I feel as a player is that the notes come out with much warmer sound. And the, uh, what I, I don't feel like the note's about to give out on me. The first time, I felt like I had to be pretty careful for that note not to be really loud and squawky. So especially if your high notes aren't coming out at all, I suggest you raise your reed a little bit and see if it's easier to play. All right, let's quickly look at the opposite. What happens if we have a reed that's too stiff? It's a little easier to tell if a reed is too stiff. It will feel hard to blow and our sound will come out kind of airy and fuzzy. So I just put a reed on that is a little bit stiff and I'll try and play a scale on it. Now you may be hearing that even though you can hear my notes coming out, there's a little bit of a a whisper attached to the sound and that's the sign of a stiff reed and that felt pretty hard for me to blow. So I have that uh, my mouth my reed set about even with the tip of my mouthpiece. I'm going to move it lower and as we talked about that allows the very softest part of the reed to be um, vibrating against the rail at the top and it makes the reed act a little softer. So I should feel it's easier to blow and you should hear a bit clearer sound if I do that same scale. <laughs> still a little stiffer than I prefer. I still had to work a little hard for that, but that improved it. So that's a, a, a trick that you can use at home. And I would like to try one other thing with this reed. So it's the third thing about movement I want to show you. We can move it up to make it stiffer, down to make it softer. And the next part is how we can, in a quick, easy way, partly balance a reed that's not perfect. So I'm going to go back to my toy reed here. Um, the parts of the reed that do most of the work are near the tip of the reed. And the perfect reed, if there was such a thing, would be totally symmetrical. And these corners that I'm touching now would vibrate exactly the same way on both sides. Now usually the cane doesn't work that way. Either it's been cut a little bit unevenly or the cane itself has a different density of grain on the two sides. And we can sort of compensate for that by moving our reed a little bit. Now, one thing that'll give you a visual clue as to whether or not your reed is symmetrical, and it's not 100% foolproof, but it often helps, is to look at the cut at the bottom of the reed. So where we have that curve, this particular reed here looks pretty symmetrical. If I look at the edges, um, they're about in the same place. It scoops down nicely, the bottom of it's there. That looks like a pretty well-balanced reed. On the other hand, this reed, and I'm sure you've had some like this, is not cut well at all. Right? This side is much higher than the other side. My guess is if I put this reed on, it would feel very lopsided. So I'm going to show you a quick way you can kind of test this yourself. This feels very odd in your mouth, but it's a helpful tool to know about. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my mouthpiece in my mouth, you know, resting the reed in my bottom lip like I usually do, and imagine that this is my bottom lip. This is how my clarinet sits. I'm going to rotate the mouthpiece at about a 45 degree angle. So that if this was my bottom lip, you can see I'm now squishing that corner of the reed shut. And I'm only playing the upper part of it. So I'm just going to play an open G. Then I'm going to stop. I will rotate the clarinet in my mouth the other way. 
about the same amount. So it's 30 to 45 degrees up. Um, and now I'm squishing the other side of the reed and I'm going to play. So what we're doing, we're not moving it across our mouth. We're keeping it centered on our lip, but I'm spinning it this way and I'm spinning it this way. If you try and keep as normal an embouchure as you can, your tone's not going to sound great in this. But here's what we're looking for. Um, we're going to see if one side of the reed feels more resistant than the other. So it'll feel harder to blow and it will sound fuzzier. And usually someone listening can hear the difference. So I'm going to turn this reed one direction. So I'm rotating it this way. Um, what I'm doing is squishing the left side of the reed so I'm testing the right side. Then I'll rotate the other way. Now I felt a difference there. I'm going to play it again and see if you can hear a difference. To me the second one was harder to play and it probably sounded a bit fuzzier. So here's the right side, left side. I'm trying not to turn my whole head, it probably happens a little bit. So on this read, the left side sounded more resistant. So I can actually help adjust for that a little bit by taking the stiffer side of the read, which in this case was my left side. In fact, this poor lopsided read here that had this cut way up on the left side um, would probably have been thicker on the left side. What I can do is just a little bit move that reed to the right. We want to take the stiff side and move it towards the center. So now we're making the thinner side of the reed touch the rails more so it will act thicker. We're making the thicker side of the reed touch the rails less so it'll act thinner. Um, we don't have a lot of room to move side to side because again if I move it too far over I'll get a leak in this corner and then it will be harder to play. So when you're experimenting with this, it's usually pretty obvious if you've gone too far. All right, so I'm going to play this read as it's set now, and then I'm going to move it a little bit to the side and see if you hear a difference. So this is my read that was a little stiff, still feels a little stiff. Now I'm going to adjust again. I open the top screw of my ligature, I wiggle it a little bit to the right, and I try the same read again. yet. In fact, that was almost almost a good read for me. Um, so it was feeling too resistant before. Now I kind of feel like there's something to work with. It's still a little bit resistant, but I'm much happier with it. And if for some reason I had to play a rehearsal on this right now, I think I could get that to work pretty well. If you find this video helpful, I have lots of other great pointers on how to make the clarinet easier to play, and many videos and resources are available to you free of charge. Probably the easiest way for you to be a regular enjoyer of such things is to become part of the Clarinet Mentors community. And to do that is very simple. Um, if you go to the website, which is written out below, www.learnclarinetnow.com, you can sign up to be a member of the Clarinet Mentors community. This also gives you access to my bi-weekly newsletter, which always has a really um, interesting, valuable tip to make clarinet playing easier for you. You'll also be the first to hear when new clarinet videos get posted, and if there are any other special clarinet events happening, I'll be sure that you're informed of it. So, www.learnclarinetnow.com.